All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our West Placer virtual community meeting. I am Placer County Supervisor Bonnie Gore, and tonight we're going to provide an update on plan construction and development in West Placer County and in West Roseville. We are recording the webinar and it will be available for viewing on my county webpage by the end of the week at placer.ca.gov forward slash Bonnie Gore. So the meeting that we're having tonight is really a follow-up to a meeting that we hosted last year about development and construction. In that meeting, we covered a further outlook on what our community will look like, as well as the expansion of Highway 65 and the construction of Placer Parkway between Highway 65 and 99. Um, and then back in October, we hosted a community meeting about water in Roseville and in Placer County. So before we start with our agenda about development this evening, I've asked Tony Ferenzi from Placer County Water Agency to join us briefly just to summarize uh, that topic for us, because I know that people are concerned about water when we're talking about development and, and growth in our county. So um, he's going to do a short presentation, brief uh, synopsis of what he spoke about in October, but I would encourage you to take a look at um, the October community meeting for a further, more comprehensive update about water. So Tony is a professional engineer and director of strategic affairs at Placer County Water Agency. He's responsible for long range planning and strategic initiatives. Um, I'm going to just pass it over to Tony now. He's got a great background in water and um, he'll be able to give us a brief update. Take it away, Tony. First sound check, can you hear me? Very good, okay. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Gore, for thinking of uh, PCWA both when you asked us to present on water la uh, last October and this time. And I also just wanna thank the audience. Uh, it just shows us how um, important water is, not just to us as people that work in the industry, but to all of you. So we actually appreciate that interest in water. And uh, if I could just have the next slide, please, I'll get going. So this is a little bit of the lay of the land. So I'm gonna talk about PCWA. We are a countywide agency, but our water service area is essentially the foothills in West Placer County. And you see that there, everywhere that you see the little WTP, that stands for a water treatment plant. And so we have water systems sort of up and down the foothills. And then also the shown there in green is our canal system. And then the water system extends down into West Placer County. We, uh, in, in one way or another, serve all of the cities and also unincorporated parts of uh, Placer County. Uh, I, 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 a couple other things. We, we have a variety of ways in which we serve. We do both um, agricultural water and uh, municipal water service. Tonight's conversation is focused on uh, municipal water supply. We also do... Um, Retail service, uh, the city of Rockland would be a good example of, uh, of us being, you know, the water company, full water service all the way to the front door. But then, you know, the city of Roseville is another example. We wholesale water to them. So PCWA is involved in a variety of water delivery methods in Placer County and West Placer County. Where does our water come from? I'm going to talk about that in a couple places. And then I'll talk about water supply reliability as it relates to development. But uh, uh, you see up at the top of the figure, Lake Spalding, that's on the Yuba River, uh, uh, just on the north part of, or north of the county. Uh, we buy that water from PG&E and it flows down into Placer County uh, by gravity and serves all of the, uh, the service areas that I just described in one way or another. And then we have uh, our Middle Fork project. It's shown there as French Meadows and Hellhole Reservoirs. That, that was the genesis of PCWA. We were formed to secure water supplies uh, for the people of Placer County. And I'm gonna talk about that in a, a little bit more detail in a minute, but uh, that, that is another very critical, in fact, our most critical water supply. We also have a federal contract, uh, also known as Central Valley Project Water that comes out of Folsom Reservoir, or Folsom Lake. Uh, we're working with the Bureau of Reclamation to relocate that point of diversion from the reservoir over to the Sac River so that it can conveniently serve uh, West Placer County. In addition to those three water supplies, we have some smaller ones, but I won't get into the details on that. I think with that, if I could just have you advance the slide. 
I want to talk a little bit about our Middle Fork project. Um, it's a hydropower project, again, up on the uh, Middle Fork of the American River. Uh, in this photo, you see Hillhole Reservoir on your left and French Meadows Reservoir on your right. Together, they are more than 340,000 acre feet of storage. A um, little bit about what does that mean? It's uh, an acre foot is a foot of water over a football field. Uh, a, a, a house in Placer County uses anywhere from a quarter to an acre foot a year. Uh, so that just puts a little bit of perspective. But as owner operator of that um, of that water supply, it really gives us a lot of latitude. First, uh, we we only plan for and ever planned for 120,000 acre feet of consumptive use on this on these reservoirs. So so less than half of the reservoir storage we actually plan on consuming, and that offers a great deal of reliability in these reservoirs being able to meet the needs of Placer County. Um, and it really was a big deal that Placer County the, back in the mid-century had a vision for establishing its own water supply in county for the people of Placer County. There was no federal or state money involved and that gives us control. And, and there really is a great deal of benefit that goes along with being the owner operator of our own water supply. Uh, we get to prioritize it. it it's a multi-use project. It does generate hydropower, but um, it's all the way into our policy and our, and our act that water supply is the mission of these reservoirs that is the priority. There are environmental commitments. There's obligations that go along with being this reservoir operator owner. Um, we have uh, in-stream flow requirements from these reservoirs all the way downstream, all the way even past uh, Placer County into the lower American River. Uh, from time to time, you're going to hear that we're doing something called a water transfer in a dry year, and people ask about what that is. And, and uh, that is something that spawns out of our um, accords that we have with the environmental community, where uh, we agree to send water down the uh, rivers so that uh, it's good for the health of the river in those dry years. And that, that's part of the peace that we have over the use and control of, over these water supplies. So that, that actually is a good thing. And if there's any questions, I'd be able to take on, on that. But next slide, please. Um, this is just a new way of looking at the lay of the land here. I, I thank you, uh, Supervisor Gore, for having this on the cover. It, it really is a, a, a neat picture. It, it shows in a different way where our water comes from, but a little bit more detail where it can uh, be used. And so you see as an example, our foothill uh, communities from Alta down to Applegate, they only really have access to the Yuba River supply. As you get down into the lower foothills, like the town of Loomis and that, you have access to both the American River um, and the Yuba supply. And then in West Placer County, like uh, or the area of, of tonight's conversation, you have access to everything. We have groundwater out there. Uh, we have our Sac River supply. Um, and, and both our supplies out of the mountains, uh, both American and Yuba River supplies. And, and so when we're talking about West Placer County, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of options in serving um, that area. And uh, one last slide, and then I'll be wrapped up. Um, just wanna talk about, you know, so as is always the case in California and talking about developing, growing new communities, is there gonna be enough water? And this is a real simple way to answer that question. And so we have today's portfolio of both water supplies shown in the stacked bar chart, and then our demands uh, shown as a white dot there. And then we have the conditions at build out. And you can see that our water supplies do grow. It's not because we're gonna be securing new water rights. We have all the water rights we're, we're really ever gonna have, uh, but we some of those water rights, we have um, uh, projects to be built and that kind of thing to um, have access to those water supplies. And those are things that are in the plan. And so our, our water supply portfolio does grow with the uh, completion of those projects in the future. And then you can see that our demands uh, will grow. So currently we're at about 130,000 acre feet of demand. And at build out, we expect to be just shy over um, or, or just, uh, just over 250,000 acre feet and well within our uh, water supply portfolio. And so with that, I just will wrap up by saying, um, you know, water, uh, water use efficiency and water conservation are always going to be part of the conversation of planning and managing water supplies and droughts and that kind of thing in California. It's just part of the business at this point. And uh, we do encourage water use efficiency uh, and here, uh, just as, as a matter of fact on that, so since 2000, our service area population has doubled since the year 2000. 
but our water supply has only gone up by 50%, or I mean, excuse me, our water demands have only gone up by 50% since 2000. So you can see that homes are getting more and more efficient. And then we're constantly working with our existing customers to achieve the same goals as well. And as far as, you know, in drought years, the governor is always asking us to um, do our part to conserve this last year, it was 15%. We um, actually exceeded that call to action last year. And that is part of uh, managing water supply in California. Even if you have full supplies, uh, uh, the way I'd say it is, you know, we don't want to um, come across as uh, tone deaf to what's going on across, on across the state and put a target on our back. Uh, we've done it right here in Placer County. We planned well ahead. Uh, the people back in the mid-century did a good thing. They built the water first, knowing uh, that all of these demands would come. And uh, we don't ever want to be a target simply because we did it right here in Placer County. So we do our part. And uh, that concludes my, my high-level overview. Again, thank you, Supervisor Gore, for giving us a little time. Thank you, Tony. I really appreciate that update. And if, there will be information to contact PCWA and all of our presenters tonight. Um, at the end of the presentation, the information will be left on the screen following the meeting. So you can reach out to him or our other presenters directly. And if you do have any questions, actually Tony will be available to directly ask about water in the chat, he can answer some of those questions. And again, we wanna encourage you to watch the full presentation about water in West Roseville you can check that out by visiting my county webpage. So let's get into the agenda, the rest of the agenda for this evening. Uh, we've got a couple of items. First, we're going to go over uh, the development that's been approved in Placer County. Uh, then we will hear about current construction that's happening in our area and how to stay up to date on what's happening. We've asked the city of Roseville to give an update on their current and upcoming projects. We really appreciate the city of Roseville partnering with us since a lot of folks really don't know the difference between what's in the city of Roseville and what's in the county portion of Roseville. Then we'll have an update on the work being done on Baseline Road. And finally, we'll just have all the contact information like I mentioned at the end, so you will know how to get hold of people directly if you've got specific questions. We did hear questions from about 80 of you. Thank you very much. 80 questions were submitted and we provided those questions to our presenters to include in their presentations. Any questions about specific situations will be addressed directly to our residents who submitted them. And then one note about public comment. We won't be having public comment this evening. Uh, we actually had a thousand people register for the Zoom meeting, which is terrific. People are definitely interested in learning about what's happening in our community. Uh, so um, we wouldn't be able to take all this public comment, but um, if you have questions, concerns, always feel free to reach out to me individually on any topic. Uh, so likely your questions that you have will be answered during the presentation, but if you like, we have a chat box there, a Q&A box, and we have staff available and ready to answer questions um, if you have some questions, we have st staff from Placer County Planning, Placer County Engineering and Surveying, the City of Roseville, and Placer County Water Agency. So let's go ahead and get started. As you know, I'm Bonnie Gore, Placer County Supervisor. I represent primarily Central Roseville uh, between Fidiment Road and Roseville Parkway, and I also represent the Dry Creek area in unincorporated Placer County south of Baseline Road. So when we refer to West Placer, um, what are we talking about? Um, as you may know, Placer County stretches from the Roseville area all the way up to Lake Tahoe. This is a map of our county, and I will share with you that we have over 400,000 people in Placer County. We just finished with our census, and the area that really grew was South Placer, where we had a 16% increase overall in population in the county, and most of that increase was definitely in the West Placer County area. So uh, the next slide is a close-up of the area, and the portion that's outlined in black is the city of Roseville, and to the west of that is unincorporated Placer County. Um, as many of you are newer to the area, you 
you may not be aware of all the planning that has taken place over the past 15 years, both as the county and the city have planned for future development. So we are glad you're here, but we want you to know that we planned for you to be here. And we're also planning for other residents uh, to be here as well. So in this uh, slide here, I wanna share with you um, the specific plans that are being considered and or actually have already been approved. And I'll share with you briefly what a specific plan is. Uh, you take a large portion of land that is going to be developed and actually basically master plan it and determine uh, the variety of housing types that will go there, schools, where the parks will go, trails, commercial portions of the land, fire stations, everything you might need in an area is planned out ahead of time so that when you purchase a home in West Roseville, you know where the parks are going to be, uh, hopefully where the next stores are going to be. It's a, it's a large uh, master planning process, but it really allows for surety uh, for our residents and for folks who want to come in and develop. So I'm just going to point out quickly the specific plans in West Placer. We have the Placer Ranch area in pink up at the top, which is approved by the Board of Supervisors in 2019. Regional University is in blue off to the west. That was approved by the Board of Supervisors in 2008. Placer Vineyard specific plan, lower in the pink, was approved by the Board of Supervisors in 2007. And Riolo Vineyard specific plan in the light yellow at the very bottom was approved by the Board of Supervisors in 2009. So you, you'll see that we've been planning for these projects for quite a while and they're actually starting to come to fruition. In the next slide, I wanna point out some of the specific plans in West Roseville. A Creek, Field, Creek View is the teal color square in the middle of the map, approved by the City Council in 2012. The West Roseville specific plan in the Manila yellow color was approved by the City Council in 2004. Many of you live in that area. The Sierra Vista specific plan is in turquoise. It was approved by the City Council in 2010. So it is certainly a lot of development, both in the county and the city, but each jurisdiction has worked really hard to balance these specific plans to provide all the needs of our communities, like I mentioned. And these projects actually take years of planning, um, anywhere between five to 10 plus years, lots of public input um, gathered so that we can make sure that these projects can roll out as smoothly as possible. And with the exception of the Placer Ranch specific plan, these plans were approved more than a decade ago, actually before I served on either uh, the Roseville City Council or the Board of Supervisors. Um, and so I appreciate all the work that's been done prior to me coming on to the Board of Supervisors. And now it's really our job as a board as city council members to help make sure that we can continue to meet the housing needs, the commercial needs, uh, the business needs of our communities, and uh, and make sure that we actually have the right economic, well, the right economic conditions to to, to drive. We have the right economic conditions right now. We're seeing to to drive the development process. All right, so let's move on, and I am really pleased to introduce just our next speaker. Um, I mentioned. The census and we had redistricting this last year. Because Roseville has grown so much in the last 10 years, previously Roseville only had two supervisors, uh, the supervisor representing District 1, myself and uh, District 4, um, and Supervisor Jones represents Roseville but also the Granite Bay area. As a result of redistricting, we had so many residents in Roseville uh, we couldn't just keep two supervisors representing the entire area since Granite Bay had to be kept whole. So West Roseville, we chose to keep West Roseville together, the area West Fidiment Road, and that is now in District 2. So Robert Wygand is the representative for residents in West Roseville, the area West of Fidiment Road. And he's going to introduce himself and speak with us about the Placer County Conservation Program, which is a project that he has been working on for most of his career. Robert has been a member of the Board of Supervisors since 1995. 
He lives on the same Foothills Ranch in rural Lincoln, where he grew up. He represents the western portion of the county, including Lincoln, Sheridan, and now, as I mentioned, the area in Roseville. He has lived in Placer County for over 50 years and was recently re-elected to the seventh four-year term. So I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, Supervisor Wygant, and just a, a brief introduction. We really appreciate it. And unmute yourself. Those, those details, you know, after all these years, you think I would have learned something, but um, thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity and I certainly appreciate the privilege of representing new uh, constituents in the city of Roseville. So um, my understanding is you wanted me to talk about the conservation plan and the Placer Vineyards project and its origin. So uh, starting in that order, the County, the, so the county's general plan was adopted in 1994. I was not on the board at that time, but it was on the uh, planning commission. Uh, so uh, in it, uh, there were areas planned for growth, uh, like the Placer Vineyards, which is by far the largest urban area uh, planned in the county's general plan. But also in the county's general plan, there is a lot of discussion and planning for preserving open space for a range of reasons, agriculture, recreation, et cetera. In 1997, the board uh, started out on an effort to formalize more an implementation procedure for the open space that is called out for in the general plan. And uh, it was named Placer Legacy, our open space and agricultural preservation program. It was adopted by the board in 2000. And as a part of it, under that umbrella, uh, we set aside resources and the goal of negotiating, uh, completing what is now called the Placer County Conservation Program. But Legacy in a nutshell is a proactive effort by the county to preserve permanently open space that we think makes sense in the context of the city's general plans, <clears throat> excuse me, and the county's general plan. So uh, Hidden Falls Park is the flagship project in our open space program under Legacy. It's a recreational park about halfway between the city of Auburn and the city of Lincoln. If you haven't been there, strongly would recommend that you do that. It's a thousand acre preserve that is much like a national park, uh, just smaller, but it's open to hiking and mountain biking and horseback riding, uh, et cetera. And it's, it's gorgeous and heavily visited. So the conservation plan essentially is, uh, uh, it's an opportunity that exists in state and federal law, both, whereby we can negotiate a way, their authority to implement uh, open space that is required as a result of development. So when a project uh, comes forward and if it affects a habitat that is regulated because it either has uh, jurisdictional waters on that property or species on that property, then whoever takes forward the project, whether it be a sewer project with the city of Roseville or the county or a development project by a developer, they have to mitigate for any loss of habitat that is caused as a result of that project. And they typically go through an exhaustive and extensive negotiation process with the Army Corps of Engineers, the Federal Fish and Wildlife Service, California Fish and Wildlife Service, Regional Water Quality Control Board. Typically, you get a permit from seven different agencies at the state and federal level. So we uh, knew that it would be much smarter to have that authority vested locally, where we issued the permits, but we infuse that open space preservation into our general plan uh, long-term vision. So it took a long time. It took about 20 years to complete that process. But I'm proud to say that we have a, now a plan that's acknowledged in the United States as being a template for the whole country. And it's in partnership with the city of Lincoln. So when projects are uh, developed in the county and or uh, in the city of Lincoln, uh, they will locally uh, get those local permits uh, or those federal state permits uh, from uh, the county and the city in a partnership and the open space will be protected in our county, which is not the case without a plan like this. So that open space that is protected is now infused uh, into the county 
uh, and its general plan and the city of Lincoln and its general plan. So it's complicated. If you have questions, don't hesitate to uh, contact me or our office. Bonnie and I sit on the authority which implements this program along with a city member from the city council in Lincoln. Um, and we'd be happy to give you more details, but it, it was a long time in the making and it, and it is complicated. Uh, the Placer Vineyards project, which Bonnie referred to, is a project uh, that was um, identified in the county's general plan way back in 1994 as being an area set aside for significant urban growth. And now it's uh, actually happening. That growth has started in the last few years. Um, and it will continue. It's, it's very large. Um, there, it houses about 14,000 residences and parks and all the amenities that are necessary for all of that. Uh, it uh, originally uh, had a broad ownership of about 125 people. So it took a long time for them to get through the planning process in terms of getting their final plans approved. That process actually took 13 years. So uh, whereas the original vision uh, was etched in county policy back in 1994, it took uh, the developers 13 years to cross all the T's and dot all the I's and they have completed that and now they're actually building that project. So unless Bonnie, there's something I missed or you want me to cover that, that was on my list of things to discuss. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Supervisor Wygant. Um, certainly appreciate your extensive knowledge and um, certainly served our community well. And thank you for taking a few minutes this evening. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we're going to continue now with an update about the approved development in unincorporated Placer County with Alex Fish. Alex is a graduate of Cal State University Sacramento with a bachelor's in environmental studies. He is a Supervising Planner with the Planning Services Division, where he has worked since joining Plaster County in 2004. Alex, take it away. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Supervisor Gore, for hosting this forum and inviting me to participate. Uh, as, as you noted, I am Alex Fish with Planning Services Division, and I will be providing an overview of projects in unincorporated Western Placer County, including the Dry Creek West Placer Community Plan area, south and west of Roseville. And I'll also touch on a couple of plan areas further to the north that were previously mentioned. Uh, the projects I will present are those that are currently undergoing entitlement review and projects that have completed entitlement review and are under improvement plan review, which is the engineering permit to build uh, project roadways, utilities, stormwater facilities, and other site improvements. Following my presentation, uh, the next speaker will uh, provide an overview of projects in the same geographic area that are under construction now, as well as projects that are expected to go to construction uh, later this year. So with that, let's get started. And we're already up on the next slide. Uh, as noted earlier, this map broadly shows Western Placer County, including portions of the city of Roseville. The red line in the middle is Willerga Road to the south then turning into Fidiment Road uh, to the north of Baseline Road. And Baseline Road runs east to west along the northern boundary of the Placer Vineyard specific plan area shown in purple. Uh, Willerga Road and Fidiment Road roughly approximate the westerly growth boundary of the last 20 years. And uh, the growth boundary over the next 20 years will be predominantly to the west of there. At the south end of this area is the Dry Creek community of unincorporated Placer County, including the Placer Vineyards and Riolo Vineyards specific plan areas. Can see those in purple and yellow at the bottom of your screen. And I'll also point out the location of the regional university specific plan in blue uh, towards the west, as well as um, the Placer Ranch specific plan further to the north in the sunset area west of Rockland. Next slide, please. So this is a map of the Dry Creek West Placer community plan area which is approximately 9,200 acres and covers the area immediately south and west of the city of Roseville, south of Baseline Road, down to Sacramento County line, and west to Sutter County. Next slide. Uh, this is showing just the distribution of commercial land uses within the plan area. As it exists today, the community plan area is largely comprised of low-density residential 
and rural residential land uses with a small amount of commercial and industrial zoned land. Uh, properties zoned for commercial and retail land uses are shown in the pink circles for the community plan area. And the orange circles are commercial locations within the Placer Vineyard specific plan area. Of the 9,200 acres in the plan area, approximately 160 acres are zoned for retail development. The plan area also includes an additional 200 acres of land zoned for office, uh, general commercial and government land uses with the majority of those properties located within the Placer Vineyard specific plan area. And there's also approximately 200 acres of industrial zone property located in the southeast portion of the plan area along Atkinson Street, PFE Road, and Antelope Road at the border with Sacramento County. Next slide. So looking at the community plan population trends from about 1980 on, um, the Dry Creek community has historically, as I mentioned, been a rural community. And the community plan area population uh, had uh, quite a bit of growth from the period of 1980 to 2010. Uh, growing from a population of 1,378 residents in 1980 uh, to more than 5,000 residents in 2010. Growth continued between 2010 and 2020 uh, when 1,332 additional residents uh, moved into the plan area and 465 new homes were added, uh, representing about a 25% increase in population over that period. And as of the 2020 census, the plan area population is estimated to be 6,347 persons. Next slide. This graph uh, just shows kind of the trends with buildings. So while the community has historically consisted of low density residences, uh, ranchettes and small farms, the community has experienced substantial growth over the last 30 years, uh, which is the approximate time frame for when Placer County first adopted a community plan for this area and envision the transition of the community from a rural area west of the city of Roseville to a more suburban community with a mixture of rural residences, modern high quality housing, parks and open space, all in close proximity to near, nearby urban areas and services. We can see here that 875 new homes have been added since 2005, uh, 724 of those just since 2013 alone. And so far this year, we've issued 61 building permits. Next slide. So this map, uh, this graphic is, uh, shows the uh, dispersion of projects currently under entitlement review, approved projects anticipated to begin construction this year, and projects under construction throughout the Dry Creek Community Plan area. The red square to the north and the orange square to the east represent approved commercial and industrial projects that I will touch on as we go through the presentation. Uh, purple triangles represent projects that are in entitlement review, which is the term used to broadly describe the discretionary review process for development projects. The green squares represent projects with approved entitlements that are not yet under construction, and the blue circles represent approved projects that are currently under construction. Next slide. Shown here in black outline is the Placer Vineyard specific plan area, which as uh, Supervisor Gore mentioned was approved in 2007. It's located north and west of Dry Creek, south of Baseline Road to Sacramento County and west out to the Sutter County line. The plan area encompasses 5,240 acres and is planned to build 14,540 residences consisting of low, medium, and high density dwelling units, plus parks, open space, commercial, retail, and government land uses. The colored polygons shown here represent the first development phase consisting of seven properties, totaling 1,535 acres. That first development phase will construct 5,266 low, medium, and high density residences uh, plus the aforementioned parks and open space and up to 413,000 square feet of commercial land uses. A portion of the plan area has commenced construction and will be covered by the next speaker while my presentation will cover properties 4B and property 7. Next slide. Shown here is property 4B. It is located just west of Watt Avenue and south of Baseline Road. It has an approved tentative map and is currently undergoing improvement plan review to construct 225 medium density residential units 
on 114 acres plus public park and a seven acre mix, uh, commercial mixed use site with up to 88 residential units. Next slide. This is a portion of property seven, which is also west of Watt Avenue and south of Baseline Road wrapping under property 4B. It also has an approved tentative map and will construct 1,692 residential units on 357 total acres. And shown here in the graphic is phase 1A, which is currently undergoing improvement plan review to construct 448 units in five residential villages. Next slide. This is showing uh, the Riolo Vineyard specific plan area, which was approved in 2009. This plan area is located south and east of Placer Vineyards and Dry Creek uh, and is bordered by Willerga Road to the east, Watt Avenue to the west, and PFE Road to the south. The plan area consists of 525 acres and again will develop 933 low, medium, and high density residential units plus parks, open space, and 7.5 acres of commercial land use. The plan area is currently undergoing initial phases of development and is generally building from east to west with the Mariposa project by town development in the southeast portion of the plan area comprising the first project to develop, which is now substantially built out. Next slide. Uh, also part of the uh, Riola Vineyard specific plan is the Silver Sage subdivision, which is located in the western portion of the plan area and is currently undergoing entitlement review for a tentative map. Uh, once approved, Silver Sage will construct 270 low and medium desident, uh, density residential units, plus parks and open space on 79 acres. Next slide, please. Nestled just uh, to the southwest of uh, Silver Sage is the Friswald subdivision, um, also part of the Riolo Vineyard specific plan area, and uh, also shares a point of access along its northern boundary with Silver Sage. Uh, it is also currently undergoing entitlement review and will construct 116 medium density residential units plus linear park improvements, and that is a 15 acre project site. Next slide. In the uh, southeast portion of the plan area, uh, Placer County is currently reviewing the Creekview Ranch subdivision project. This is not part of a specific plan. Uh, the project is located um, north of PFE Road and east of Antelope Road. It is approximately 185 acres and is uh, undergoing entitlement review for a general plan amendment, rezone, subdivision tentative map, and conditional use permit to develop a single family residential development uh, with nine uh, community rather with 598 lots in four distinct neighborhoods that will include neighborhood parks, trails and open space. Uh, this project is subject to preparation of an environmental impact report in accordance with the requirements of CEQA, otherwise known as the California Environmental Quality Act. And the draft EIR is anticipated to be circulated for public review in late spring or early summer of this year. Next slide. Shown here is the Morgan Crossing project, which proposes to convert a portion of the existing Morgan Creek golf course within the existing Morgan Creek community located generally north of PFE Road, south of Vineyard Road and east of Wolerga. The project appro uh, proposes approval of a tentative subdivision map to develop 79 low density residential lots on 45 acres by converting portions of the existing golf course located north of Dry Creek and also on the south side of Dry Creek. You can see Dry Creek in the middle of the graphic there. This project is also subject to preparation of an environmental impact report. And it is anticipated that a notice of preparation of a draft EIR will be circulated for public review in late spring or summer of this year. Next slide. This is the Baseline Commercial Center project, which is located at the southeast corner of the intersection of Baseline Road and Larga Road. This project was approved in July of 2021 and will develop a retail shopping center on 6.8 acres of land 
the 31,200 square foot shopping center, that's the total of buildings, uh, total square footage of buildings, will include 174 parking spaces to serve seven buildings comprised of service, retail, and restaurant land uses. Uh, those include a gas station and convenience store with a drive-through car wash, a drive-through fast food restaurant, oil chain center, and other retail land uses. Next slide. In the uh, eastern portion of the plan area near the uh, Union Pacific Railroad uh, yard area is the TPA Warehouses Project. This is located on Booth Road off of Atkinson Street. Uh, that project is approved and will include construction of an outdoor storage yard and two 14,400 square foot contractor warehouses on a five acre project site. With that, we've covered the Dry Creek community. Next, we will be moving a little to the north to the regional university specific plan. So this map is to orient the location of the plan area, which is immediately west of the West Roseville specific plan, Creekview specific plan, and Sierra Vista specific plan areas in the city of Roseville. Uh, to the north of the plan area in green, you can see the alignment of the future Placer Parkway, a regional east-west transportation corridor that will connect State Route 65 in, in Placer County uh, with State Route 99 in Sutter County. Next slide. The specific plan area was recently acquired by Hillsdale College and includes a 600 acre university campus shown in purple uh, that will include up to 1,713 university units plus 330 units for faculty and 75 age restricted retirement units in addition to the university use. The plan area is 1,159 acres in total and in addition to the university uses will also develop 2,269 low, medium, and high density residential units, plus 24.5 acres of commercial land uses in the eastern portion of the plan area. Uh, the, uh, the university rather recently filed a tentative map application to carry out a phase one project consisting of 1,094 low density residential units, plus an 11.4 acre commercial project in the east portion of the plan area. That map is now undergoing its second review. Next slide. Uh, shown here is the Plas Ranch specific plan, which is located immediately north of the city of Roseville and south of the Western Regional uh, Landfill and future Placer Parkway. The plan area is 2,213 acres with a planned build out of 5,636 low, medium, and high density residential, residential units. Uh, plus up to 8.4 million square feet of commercial development. The plan area includes a 300 acre university campus for CSU Sacramento's uh, planned Placer campus. And that land was recently transferred from Placer Ranch to the university in 2020 and took ownership. And CSU Sacramento has begun their campus master planning efforts. While there are no current commitments for construction, all parties are motivated to keep the momentum going and are hopeful to see construction of the campus underway within the next five years. Next slide. So right now with Placer Ranch, uh, the project recently submitted uh, its phase 1A tentative map application. That's the first small lot map uh, for that plan area. That project will create 779 single family residential lots on 183 acres of land. Uh, it will include seven villages with lots ranging in size from 4,500 to 6,000 square feet. Next slide, please. And lastly, uh, this is up in the Sunset area. It's a little, little bit of excitement about this project due to the number of jobs that it may potentially generate. This is the Placer Commerce, Commerce Center project located in the Sunset area, south of Athens Avenue, and spanning in Athens is along the uh, the right side of your screen there, and then Foothills Boulevard runs through the middle, spans both sides of Foot, Foothills Boulevard. The Placer Commerce Center proposes up to 6.8 million square feet of flex industrial space on a 393 acre project site. Buildings are proposed to range in size from 200,000 square feet up to a million square feet. And upon completion, it is estimated that the project could generate between 
3,500 and up to as many as 5,000 new jobs. So thank you. And that concludes my portion of the presentation. I'll turn it back over to Supervisor Gore. Thank you very much, Alex. I appreciate it. My pleasure. We have Rebecca Tabor, who's going to give us an update on current construction projects in the unincorporated areas of West Placer. Rebecca is the Deputy Director of Engineering and Surveying with Placer County. She is a graduate of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo with a degree in, in environmental engineering and a licensed professional engineer in civil engineering. She has served 20 years with Placer County in land development engineering and most recently an, a manager as a managerial um, role. So Rebecca, please take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Gore, for that introduction. And thank you all so much for attending tonight. For the unincorporated area of Placer County, I'll be covering what has been completed over the past couple of years, what is currently under construction, and what is expected to start construction in the next year or two. First, first slide, please. Years of county planning development approvals have now resulted in what we consider a project implementation surge. Many owners of property with approved development entitlements have begun construction in the West Placer area. We did not see construction activity slow down over these past two years, despite the pandemic. In fact, it ramped up. This photo shows five excavators working together to install about a 30 foot deep sewer pipe for the Riolo Vineyard Glen Willow subdivision project. It was a very impressive operation. Next slide, please. We anticipated that 2020 and 2021 infrastructure construction centered around Willerga and PFE roads would be inconvenient and challenging for the West Placer community and for those traveling these roads. So last year, we set up a current construction website tool to help provide information to the public about ongoing construction projects. This tool has been updated in preparation for the 2022 construction season. It includes an interactive parcel-based map that allows you to navigate and click on projects to get current project information, construction status, developer contact info, and notices of any planned road closures. Next slide, please. And for a quick example, if you were to click on the interactive map and zoom in, this example shows the green shape is Placer Vineyards, the heritage project, also called Property 1A. It's located south of Baseline Road and west of Willerga Road. And when you click on that, green shape, details come up in information to get, to get current information on the construction status. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna start with recently completed or nearly complete infrastructure projects in this area. The Placer Vineyards project known as Heritage with Lennar as the developer completed just under a half mile segment of new public road called Town Center Avenue with a connection at Willerga Road and a new traffic signal. The first Placer Vineyards Village and phase one improvements were accepted by our Board of Supervisors this past November. Village 1A includes 184 single family residential home lots. Next slide, please. For the Eastern portion of the Riola Vineyards specific plan build out, the developer, Taylor Builders, completed a regional public sewer lift station at the Glen Willow subdivision project. They also completed a substantial drainage crossing improvement and widening of PFE road. Next slide, please. Additionally, another Riola Vineyard requirement was to widen the PFE road and Willerga road intersection and modify the traffic signal a much needed and important operational improvement for traffic flow. This project is almost complete. There will be some slurry work and pavement striping at the north and south ends of Willerga Road in the next month or two to finalize the project. Next slide, please. And of course, 
the County Department of Public Works completed a major bridge replacement project on Willerga Road over Dry Creek in April of 2021. Next slide, please. Next are development projects currently under construction. Lennars Heritage Village 1B with 140 lots is nearly complete. Village 2 with 176 lots is approved for construction. The second phase includes the extension of Town Center Avenue to serve Village 2 and an extension of public sewer to the south to cross under Dry Creek and tie into the Riolo Vineyard sewer lift station. Next slide, please. The eastern portion of the Riolo Vineyard specific plan build out is nearly complete. This includes the completed phase one Mariposa subdivision with its entrance off Willerga Road, where residential home construction continues. The phase two Glen Willow project is located on PFE Road and includes 177 lots and construction is almost complete. Next slide, please. Also a Riola Vineyard project, the Mason Trails subdivision is under construction adjacent to Glen Willow. It uses the same access road off PFE Road as Glen Willow. There's 170 lots with two different home builders. Next slide, please. The Morgan Knowles subdivision is located at the northeast corner of Willerga and PFE Roads with an entrance on Willerga and road connections to the Hidden Crossing subdivision. There are 58 lots and this project is close to completion. Next slide, please. The Brady Vineyard subdivision is located at the northwest corner of Vineyard Road and Brady Lane. There are 118 lots and this one is in construction. Next slide, please. The Winding Creek subdivision, or now known as Whispering Creek, is located off of Cook Riolo Road. There are 19 lots, and this one is near completion. Next slide, please. Lastly, also on Cook Riolo Road is the Cabral Ranch subdivision. There are 12 lots, and this is very near completion. Next slide, please. Now on to development projects expected to start construction this year in 2022. The Placer Vineyards Heritage Project contains multiple villages. So this graphic shows village two in the red color. That construction will continue this year. Sorry, it's the red color. And then the village three is the orange color, 246 lots. Village three is expected to start construction this summer. Next slide, please. The Morgan Place subdivision, generally located at the southeast corner of Willerga and PFE roads, contains 80 lots. The improvement plans are approved and it is expected to start within a few weeks. Next slide, please. The Double S Ranch subdivision is located at the southeast corner of Vineyard Road and Cook Riolo Road. There are 36 lots. Improvement plans are near approval and it is expected to start construction this year. Next slide, please. The Brookwood subdivision is on the south side of PFE Road, just west of the Morgan Ranch subdivision. It contains 17 lots. Improvement plans are near approval, and we also expect this to begin construction this summer. Next slide, please. The Sabre City Park Estates subdivision project is within Sabre City. There are 24 lots. Plans are near approval, and we expect it to construct this, season, this summer. Next slide. And then the Riolo Vineyard Silver Sage project 
may start rough grading this year once the planning approval is received. This western portion of the Riola Vineyard specific plan requires significant upgrades to the PFE and Watt Avenue intersection with pavement widening and a traffic signal improvement. The intersection plans are currently in for county review. Construction of the Watt and PFE intersection is expected to start in 2023. Next slide. Lastly, the, public, the County Department of Public Works is in the design phase and starting right, right of way acquisition now for a bridge replacement for Watt Avenue over Dry Creek. These pictures show the existing bridge. The goal is to start construction on the new bridge in 2024. Next slide. This year should be fairly calm for major infrastructure improvements as compared to what the community experienced over the past two years in this area. But next year in 2023, it looks like there will be another wave of major infrastructure construction activity in the Watt Avenue and PFE Road area. The Placer Vineyard Central Group decided not to start construction on the baseline road widening improvements associated with their development phase this spring, but may be looking at later this year or next year to start. An update specifically on baseline road will be provided later in tonight's presentation. I wanted to leave you with a photo of a sewer manhole being constructed for that deep sewer line within the Glen Willow project and conclude with a reminder that we have a tool av available through the county's website. The link is, is on this slide and you can also just search current construction in the search bar of the county's homepage and just type in current construction to get a direct link to the website. Thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you very much, Rebecca. I appreciate the update. Next, it is my pleasure to welcome Mayor Krista Berners-Stoney, and she's going to introduce the Roseville portion of our presentation. Krista Berners-Stoney was elected to the Roseville City Council in November, 2018. She served as vice mayor through 2020 and is currently serving a two-year term as mayor. Krista owns a public relations firm here in Roseville and has spent much of her career developing and executing public affairs plans for clients in the private sector. Krista is a Roseville native and a veteran of the United States Navy. She earned a bachelor's degree from Sacramento State. Her work has led to being named Sacramento Region's 40 Under 40, and she is a recipient of the Athena Award and the Sacramento State's Distinguished Service Award both presented for demonstrating professional excellence, community service, and leadership skills. Krista? Okay, hello everyone. Can you hear me okay out there? Yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, Bonnie, thank you so much for putting this together and putting this, um, so many slides and so many, so much information that's really important for our community to know. So I just wanna thank you for heading this up. And uh, as you mentioned, I am a lifelong resident of Roseville. And so even I sometimes driving out West on baseline am just so surprised at the number of homes that we have coming up. But this presentation is so important because it really underscores that these, these parcels, these homes have been on the books and planned for many years for our specific planning process. So we are definitely a growing community and we will continue to be so um, for the foreseeable future, probably for the next 20, 30 or more years. So um, I have had the pleasure of working with Greg Bitter, who I would like to introduce. He's our planning manager at the city of Roseville. I worked with him for many years as a Roseville planning commissioner, and he was always my go-to person when it came to being able to answer questions of myself or even residents. So um, in his day-to-day -day job, he is the planning division. He manages the planning division for the city of Roseville's development services department. The planning division includes a long range planning section and a current planning section. The long range planning section is responsible for the city's advanced planning efforts, including the general plan maintenance, the specific plan development, coordination with local, state, and federal agencies, legislative and policy reviews, and review of regional 
projects of significance, which is what we're talking about tonight. And the current planning section is responsible for processing entitlements for land use projects, staffing the planning commission and the design commission, providing general land use and zoning assistance to the public and development community and assisting with code enforcement. Prior to coming on board with the city of Roseville, he was a principal planner in the city of Sacramento and he managed the current planning section there. He has a master's of art in urban and regional planning from the University of Florida and I can't say enough great things about him. So I'm glad that he's joined us here tonight. Greg? Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Bernasconi. Um, I appreciate that. I'm a little embarrassed by it also. Um, it sound, sounds better than it probably really is. Um, good evening, everybody. And I and also uh, want to thank Supervisor Gore um, for hosting this event. I know we did this last year, and uh, I think it is a, a great opportunity for us to get the word out to a broad uh, section of the community. I'm tonight, I'm going to, um, we can go ahead and jump off of that um, slide. I think everybody has the their mice have run out of their homes with that one. Uh, we're going to talk about commercial development in West Roseville. I've seen some of the questions in the chat. And I can tell you a lot of folks are asking for details. I have some details um, to provide you tonight on some of the things coming up commercial development wise. Um, but it's important to understand uh, how residential development uh, works hand in hand with commercial development. So if we go to the next slide, um, you can see here that, that in Roseville, and if you live in Western Roseville, you, you know this, um, you see this every day, that residential development continues to be at a 15 year high in the city. Uh, we've had 15, over 1,500 new um, single-family lots brought online since the 1st of January 2021. We um, are projecting that we will uh, approve, um, issue final building permits for almost 1,600 single-family dwellings uh, by the end of June of this year. So the fiscal year runs July 1st to June 30th. Um, that would make it the fourth busiest uh, um, year in the history of the city. Uh, last year was the third busiest year in the history of the city, so we're really cranking out single family homes. Um, getting close to a half of a, um, or excuse me, uh, almost $500 million in building valuation for residential activity. And next year is not going to slow down that much. We're looking at a little over 1,200 new homes. Um, you can see that in an average year, we approved 900 uh, single family permits. Uh, so we're, we're running a little more than double here for the last few years. <clears throat> so while the majority of new residential development has been single family, we are seeing a lot more activity in the multifamily sector uh, of the city. Over the past 12 months, we've approved five multifamily development projects, two that are market rate projects, which are going to have rents in the $2,000 to $3,000 range, um, and three affordable projects that will provide housing for individuals and families in the very low, low and moderate income levels. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more <clears throat> about where these projects are located uh, in a couple slides. So we can go to the next slide. We'll talk about uh, some of the commercial development activity. So we've had a little over half a million square feet of non-residential development in the past year, uh, $18 million in building valuation. Uh, you can see the total permits issued and the number of inspections. Again, these are running at 15-year at, uh, highs. Um, to, before we get into the, the details of the different uh, portions of the city, I want to talk a little bit about how commercial development works. We get asked a lot, and I get asked a lot, why is commercial development, development happening so slowly? Uh, why isn't the city um, ensuring that commercial development occurs or building commercial developments to serve the residents? And I can tell you that the city would like nothing more than commercial development to go faster. Um, however, over the past uh, 15 years since the recession in the uh, late 2000s, uh, commercial development has undergone tremendous changes. Um, you all know that online shopping uh, is increasing greatly. Um, what you might not know is that lending practices have changed. Um, and after the, after the COVID pandemic has happened, we're seeing a lot, uh, a lot of changes in the commercial um, development sector. So brick and mortar tenants <clears throat> are more risk adverse these days. So they're looking for more certainty. What provides them more certainty is more households, more residential units in the area. So they know they have um, uh, customers that are close by. So the good news for you all in Western Roseville is that the growing population, we're finally seeing an impact 
um, on the level of interest on in commercial developments. So over the next few slides, I'll be pointing out some of these commercial developments that are currently under construction and a few sites where future co commercial development could be coming in the near future. So we go to the next slide. These are the four areas of the city that I'll be talking about. Campus Oaks, um, which is where the new Nugget is located, um, is a master planned area. Uh, Fitment Ranch Phase 3 is a portion of the West Roseville specific plan. Creek View is its own specific plan, and then Sierra Vista is its own specific plan. And I think um, to try and head off some of the questions in the Q&A, a lot of folks ask, how is infrastructure um, and public facilities, how, are the, how do those accommodate all of this growth? And you've heard uh, um, Supervisor Gore mention specific plans, county staff mentioned specific plans. Um, the city of Roseville has been using specific plans since the mid 1980s. Uh, to manage their growth. Uh, what these specific plans do is they allow for um, a comprehensive look at how growth is taken care of. So when a specific plan is created and approved, all the different public services are looked at comprehensively. So we look at fire service, police service, parks and recreation um, acreages, open space areas, utilities. So you make sure that there's enough water supply, enough sewer treatment capacity, um, enough electrical capacity to serve the number of dwelling units and the amount of commercial services that are going to be provided um, in that in that portion of the area. Um, also, I think it, it's important to understand that we we also collect fees uh, for some of the um, infrastructure. There is our fees collected for road improvements. So you will see a lot of roads that are constructed initially, and they may be two lanes or four lanes, and then over time they're expanded. Um, most of the roads, most of the um, arterial roads in Western Roseville ultimately are six lanes, at least six lanes, um, where, where while they may not be constructed as six lanes initially, fees are being collected by the city so that at the appropriate time, those roads can be widened. Um, so we can jump into the next slide and I'll start talking about Campus Oaks. Uh, so the Campus Oaks master plan has approximately 950 residential units uh, um, split between apartments and single family homes. More than 700 of these units have been completed or are under construction. I know in one of the early questions we received before the presentation, folks were asking about parks in this area. Uh, there is one park um, that has already been approved, the Campus Oaks Park, which should start construction later this year. And there's one park that's under design, um, Crimson Ridge Park. The commercial development uh, that you can see in the in these slides, um, both in the in the renderings and the the photo I took, um, is a 240,000 square foot uh, commercial development. So we already know that Nugget is there. Um, if you if anybody shops in this shopping center, I'll just run through the list. I saw in the Q and A that folks were asking for specifics. So you've got Smash Brothers, a pet store, Starbucks, a Del Taco, pizza, Jamba Juice. Um, a uh, dental provider, frozen yogurt. Uh, a new tenant that's coming soon is called Dog House. They um, serve gourmet hot dogs and craft beer. So another kind of exciting user in that center. Uh, I believe 24 hour fitness is actually under construction, um, which will be good. That'll finish out that main um, line of buildings in the center of the project. Can also let everybody know that the planning commission approved the entitlements for an Ace Hardware store behind Nugget in January. Um, so that should, we should start seeing some construction activity this year for Ace Hardware. And we're working on a 7-Eleven gas station convenience market and a, um, assisted living and memory care facility within this development. So those are kind of the commercial uh, users that are coming soon to Campus Oaks. So we can jump ahead. Um, and I, if, I'm, if I am um, speaking too quickly, Somebody should chime in uh, um, and, and let me know I should slow down. If not, I'll keep going. Uh, so what you see here on the right-hand side of the map is the Fitment Ranch Phase 3 um, portion of the West Roseville specific plan. That was approved for almost 5,900 dwelling units. It's in its final phases of construction. Uh, I can tell you that this is the portion of the city where we've seen four approved multifamily projects in the past 12 months. Two of those are market rate projects and two of those are affordable projects. Um, the affordable projects uh, are in the phase where they're, they're seeking federal tax or, or state tax credits and state funding. 
So development of those may not be um, as quick as the market rate projects uh, going on. Um, <clears throat> you can also see on the left-hand side, Winding Creek, uh, also known as the Creekview Specific Plan. And this is approved for 2000 residential units. And it really has kicked off in the last year where we've um, finaled over 100 single family permits and issued over 170 single family permits. So residential development is really going quickly. You can see that uh, um, Westbrook Boulevard, the extension of Westbrook Boulevard to the north should be complete up to the Amoruso Ranch specific plan by this fall. And then also um, widening a, or the extension of Blue Oaks Boulevard to the city limits to the west should occur by the fall of 2023. <clears throat> I think it's important to point out that uh, that Westbrook Boulevard extension uh, is extending into the Amoruso Ranch specific plan, which is the newest specific plan approved by the city. This was approved back in 2016 and will uh, allow for the development of 2,800 dwelling units, approximately half a million square feet of commercial and retail and office uses, 22 acres of parks and 146 acres of open space. There's also sites for future fire station and uh, elementary schools. Again, development, you'll start seeing the, the uh, infrastructure development later this year. <clears throat> the extension of Blue Oaks to the west is going to facilitate a proposal uh, by Panatoni Development for the construction of a, uh, a light industrial uh, um, development. Uh, in 2021, the city council uh, entered into a purchase and sale agreement with Panatoni to explore the potential of developing this industrial park. It's a 200 acre piece of land. It's immediately to the, to the left of the, the colored um, residential developments. <clears throat> and we're currently working on an environmental impact report. So it's at the various early stages. There's technical studies that are currently being processed. And I can tell you that there will be ample opportunity for community involvement going forward on that project. So we can jump to the next slide, which um, I think a lot of folks are gonna be interested in. Uh, the Plaza of Blue Oaks. Uh, this is one of the commercial centers in Fitment Ranch. It's an 82,000 square foot shopping center. Uh, it's a 35,000 square foot anchor tenant. Rayleigh's is coming in. Um, it's under construction. We think there should be open sometime in this, this summer, early fall at the latest. Uh, <clears throat> you also will have a gas station um, and additional uh, commercial uses. So I can tell you right now that the, the um, brokers have signed leases with Chipotle, Habit Burger, uh, Garden of Eaton, which I'm not sure exactly what kind of restaurant that is, but uh, there's a, a sandwich shop, a dentist, UPS store, an auto zone is proposed. They're working on the, the Arco AMPM gas station uh, right now. And we recently approved, it's kind of in the, the white uh, portion in the upper right-hand corner of the site plan, uh, daycare facility, the Goddard School. Uh, they should be under construction this year. So that development, uh, we're hoping to get online this year and finally start providing some of the Western Roseville citizens with commercial uh, shopping opportunities. So we can jump to the next slide. <clears throat> and this is the, the area in the, at the lower image of the map is the Sierra Vista specific plan. Uh, it has approximately 8,800 8, total dwelling units uh, with a variety of home builders building and selling homes as fast as they can. Uh, the infrastructure is well underway. And you can see on this slide, the, the roads in blue and, and uh, red will be completed in this uh, calendar year. So red is spring of 2022, blue is fall of 2022. So you can see Market Street will be connecting um, Baseline with Pleasant Grove. Uh, Westbrook Boulevard will almost be complete this year. I know we get a lot of questions about Westbrook. There's one small portion of it that is uh, needs to be completed with the adjacent development and that's looking like fall of 2023 before that's completed and then i know um ken graham with the county is going to talk a little bit more about baseline road but you can see the blue sections of baseline road being completed uh this fall and, and he'll have a little bit more detail on that i do want to point out the the circle at the intersection of fitment and pleasant grove where it says commercial interest 
Um, <clears throat> that's exactly what it means. We don't have any projects in the uh, um, in process right now, but we've been regularly meeting with the three property owners of the, those three commercial sites at that intersection. Um, each one has a grocery user that they're looking at. Uh, I believe we're going to have at least two grocery stores at that intersection. Uh, we'll probably be working through the planning approvals this year, and you could see construction starting next year at that site. <clears throat> Finally, the Village Center. Um, I think we can jump to the, uh, uh, well, you know, before we jump to this, I want to head off some of the questions that we got early. The Sierra Vista specific plan, while it's home to 8,800 8, um, new dwelling units, uh, I saw several questions in the early, in the early uh, questions we received about the school districts and how schools are provided. This specific plan area has three different school districts um, that serve it. It has the Roseville Joint Union High School District, it has the Roseville Elementary District, and it has the Center Unified School District. So there are folks that, that are a little concerned that some of their children, they're moving in, their children are going to elementary schools in the Antelope area. And that's because that's in the Center Unified School District. Center has two elementary schools located in the Sierra Vista specific plan and one middle school located in the Sierra Vista specific plan. Um, I can tell you that they are developing, uh, they have plans and they're getting ready for the first um, elementary school. And that is uh, on Upland Drive, just north of Vista Grande. So the city doesn't really play a role in the timing of school development. Uh, we make sure going through the specific plan process that there are adequate sites for elementary, middle and high schools to serve all of the student population that the school districts project to be uh, generated. Uh, but the, the elected uh, school districts, they, they make the decisions on when schools are constructed. They also make decisions on school district boundaries. That's a topic, that's a question we get a lot. Does school districts change their boundaries based on shifting demographics? Um, and the city and city council really has no role in that. Uh, I just would like to point that out. Um, so now quickly, the village center retail. Again, most folks that live out here, we can go to the next slide, please. You, you, you already know that Kitchen 747 is open and Mojo's Cafe is open. Um, the owners are also working on a variety of other uses. They're looking at maybe a medical provider, uh, a couple of fitness uses, a yoga studio, possibly a veterinarian. They have a small market, a uh, specialty market that they're looking at uh, trying to sign a lease. So there should be some exciting new tenants coming to the Village Center uh, within the next uh, six to 12 months. Um, so you can be a lookout on the lookout for more development there. And finally, I think we jump to what everybody uh, really is is uh, interested in, and that's development of the baseline marketplace. Um, this is a proposal for almost three quarters of a million square feet of commercial uses. There's three large floor plate users that are located on this property. Um, there are fast food restaurants all over the place regular sit-down restaurants, retail, three gas station parcels. Um, there's a bus transfer facility uh, in the master plan for this site. <clears throat> I don't have great news. I know everybody wants to know when is this going to start building. Um, I can tell you that the, that the developer and property owner is working right now with some large floor plate tenants, um, trying to get the final, uh, final um, work done on some leases. And as soon as the large floor plate tenants uh, decide that they are ready to move forward, uh, then all of the smaller buildings um, uh, will, will start moving as well. So those, those large floor plate users uh, basically provide the revenue that allow for the smaller um, users and they, they provide the, the um, customer draw so that the smaller users um, are viable, to be honest, and can finance their projects. So they're working on a plan um, to finance their infrastructure, and they're working on plans with uh, their final tenants. And you know, there's there quite possibly could be some news coming in the next three to four months on this site. I know everybody in West Roseville is tired of every time they ask what's going on with Baseline Marketplace, the answer is like, well, call us back in six months or a year. But I think there are some exciting things coming sooner than the, the last time we provided this presentation. Um, 
So I think with that, that's kind of a, a run through of the commercial activity uh, in Western Roseville. Uh, I think the final slide um, is a link to our development activity website. Oh, I'm sorry, here's some elevations for baseline marketplace. Um, typical uh, suburban retail power center elevations. Um, so the final slide is really a link to our, our development activity report. Um, we have uh, um, up-to-date uh, interactive maps on there. You can also um, pull up residential building, uh, find out what current projects are going on in Roseville and any new submitted projects that are going on. And uh, the web link is at the bottom of the slide. So that concludes my part of the presentation. I'm happy to turn it back to Supervisor Gore. Thank you very much, Greg. I really appreciate you taking the time to present this evening and really address some of the questions that folks have about what's happening in the city of Roseville. I know we're getting close to the end, but next I am excited to have Ken Graham, who is our Director of Foster County Public Works, to join us to give us an update on the progress of the baseline. Work. Ken has 32 years of engineering and public works experience with the County of Placer and the City of Sacramento. He has been our Director of Public Works for Placer County since 2006. He is a graduate of UC Irvine with a degree in civil engineering and he and his family live in the Rockland area. Ken, take it away. Great, thank you Supervisor Gore and good evening everybody. My name is Ken Grimm, I'm with the Department of Public Works for the county. And I'm gonna talk about Baseline Road, what's going on, what's coming on in the short term, what's going on in the long term. And when I speak, I'm speaking on behalf of, of the county as well as the city, because Baseline Road goes through both of our jurisdictions. We're working together to make that project happen. Uh, I think it's first important to understand you know, what's proposed out there. Today, for the most part, Baseline Road west of Fitiment Road is a two lane roadway and we intend to make it eventually a six lane roadway. But it's hard to go from two to six all at one time, particularly for the long length. So we've prioritized getting it to four lanes first, trying to go from Fitiment out to the Sutter County line and getting it widened to four lanes. We're doing that. Everybody who builds a house or a non-residential commercial building in that part of town has to pay into a fund that we've been collecting for the last 10 to 15 years uh, to widen Baseline Road in particular, but also doing work on Malerga Road, which you may have noticed the brand new bridge uh, was constructed out of that program and completed just this past year. So what's going on in the short term? Short term, you're gonna see a lot of construction going on. You saw some construction going on on the portion here shows a map. On the right-hand side is the intersection of Fitiment and Baseline Road. And then you're kind of going west towards and beyond Watt Avenue. A portion of that road was completed, uh, just recently completed. That's that yellow portion in the middle. And then we are going to be seeing work occurring this year. And I think Greg spoke about that just a few minutes ago. The red portion going out to the west, going a little bit beyond Watt Avenue is gonna be widened to four lanes. And then there's gonna be some widening that occurs to the west of the current area that's, that's been widened. That is gonna be happening this year. That's the, so you'll, we'll have the red, the gold, and the blue. Still leaves that white portion undone. Between either the marketplace, when they go, if they go first, or the development that's occurring just south of the roadway. They're building up to Baseline Road. They're also proposing that if they get there first, they're gonna be widening Baseline Road from that blue line, which is now the white line, going east towards Baseline Road. That's probably still a year away, um, but we wanna let people know that it's coming. Longer term, you know, we need to get this road all the way out. Eventually, we need to get it to Highway 90 and, and 70. The first uh, groups of Placer Vineyards, if we could go to the next slide, please. Here shows another map. You show that we see on the top map there, the red, gold, blue, and white lines that we were just looking at the blow up. Now we've kind of gone out and, and we're looking at a bigger picture. Eventually, we need to get this road and it's planned to be six lanes all the way out to the county line, which is roughly the second red dot or one of those middle red dots you see along Baseline Road. 
the first group of Placer Vineyards that's going to be starting to build houses on the west side of Watt Avenue. They're looking to start, but they haven't started. But before they can, they will have to widen Baseline Road from roughly the red, where the red line ends right now and go towards the west, roughly halfway to that first red line. So that will be widened to four lanes. It could happen as early as next year. Um, they were originally hoping to go this year. I think that it's just a big chunk of uh, project to take on their, on their hands and they're working to get that started. But once they start, they will be required before they build houses to get that piece of roadway in. And then as they get further in their development, we are going to have them widen all the way to the county line to four lanes. So that'll get us all the way through from Fitment to the Sutter County line. That's likely years though still away. So there is still more pain, if you will, before we get that long-term gain of getting that full four, four lane roadway. In addition to that today, we have those four stop signs that can cause havoc with traffic, particularly during the commute times. And you'll see those four red dots here the first one is you're going down from Roseville down towards Highway 9970, that's Locust, uh, Locust Road. And then you go further and you hit Pleasant Grove South, Pleasant Grove North, and then Thomas Street. Those last three are actually in Sutter County. We have offered as part of our project fairly early in the project, as soon as we can start building a couple hundred homes that, or excuse me, it's 700 homes, that we will replace those stop signs with signal lights and widen the intersection so we can get more traffic through without every car having to stop. We are also currently exploring with our partners in Sutter County if there's a way of starting that sooner, um, but our development community does have the requirement to do it before they build 700 homes. So that is in the works, probably still at least a year out there and most likely a couple of years unless we're able to advance that project in some form. And then what would be the use of having a four or even six lane baseline road if you got to the Sutter County line and all of a sudden it went back down to two lanes. So we are working with our partners at Sutter County. They also have some development known as Sutter Point uh, and in particular a development that is looking to break ground here soon called Lakeside. How do we widen Riego Road, which is the extension of Baseline Road, all the way to 9970? There's a great new, big, large interchange that most people who have ever gone down there have seen. We need to extend that four-lane road out from the interchange going east towards uh, Placer County. And so we continue to work with them. That's a work in progress. Um, can be very difficult to get uh, three jurisdictions all aligned on exactly how it's going to happen. But the good news is, none of our communities realize the city and county lines. They're all looking to be able to get east and west through Baseline Riego, whether it's the Highway 9970 or locations in Roseville. And so everyone's motivated, everyone's been working together, but it is still a work in progress. I know we're running late, so I think that's trying to do it a little bit quicker. Those are some of the things happening short term, some of the things that are happening longer term, and ultimately long-term after we get the road to four lanes, we'll be widening baseline road to six lanes. We are collecting again, as I mentioned, with the city of Roseville, money on every house or building built to help contribute to the fund that will make those improvements happen. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Supervisor Gore. Thank you, Ken, appreciate the update. So I know we have provided you with a lot of content this evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to all of our presenters for taking uh, the time to share their expertise. As I mentioned, the recording of this presentation will be available on my county website, plaster.ca.gov forward slash Bonnie Gore. And as always, you are welcome to reach out to me directly with any questions that you, have, that you might have. And my email is there on the screen. So thank you again to everyone as we close. Um, we will include all of the contact emails and phone numbers of each of our presenters. So if you have any questions about a topic that came up that you want to find out more about, feel free to reach out to all of us. And I will leave this screen up for the next five, 10 minutes so that you can take a photo or jot down some information. 
So thank you again. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Um, and I know that we'll be planning more of these webinars as we continue just to make sure that you all are informed about what's happening here in Placer County. Have a good evening.